hi John, thanks for joining us today. Uh, for those that may not know, please tell us about Zora. Yeah, great to, to be here. Uh, Zora is the world's leading subscription management platform. Uh, if you're thinking about transforming a business right now take a, to take advantage of this phenomenon that we call the subscription economy, and regardless of whether you're a consumer-focused business or you're selling to other businesses, we are here to help you launch, scale, and ultimately uh, deliver a strong recurring revenue business. Um, we exist, I think, because, well, the world has changed, right, around us. We, we, we all experience this. It's, it's, it's in every industry that we, we, we see. Um, we see individuals and businesses really uh, looking to access and consume the services that they need in, in, a, in a very different way. Um, you know, we support all sorts of companies, some you can easily imagine. Of course, we've been supporting uh, software companies and media companies. You know, if you subscribe to the Telegraph or you use like GoPro's consumer video editing software, uh, maybe you use Zoom, everybody uses Zoom, right? Amazing uh, increase in the, its use over the, over the pandemic. You know, you can understand that these companies, we've been providing subscription management services for, for, for a very long time. Um, but it's also very interesting to look at some of the other industries that that uh, are really embracing this this concept of the subscription economy. Let's look at like if you look at automotive, I mean, you know, we, we go back back to to the Model T Ford. That was the start of mass consumerism, mass production. Everybody wanted to own a car. But is that the case moving forward? I think if you talk to the big automotive companies now, they're they're thinking less about cars and, and more about mobility as a service. Uh, we are helping customers like Ford at the moment to, to take on that, that particular journey. Um, what about healthcare? I mean, you, you know, you might not think that this would ever enter into an area like that, but you look at big medical imaging equipment fan manufacturers like Siemens Healthineers, a big customer of ours, you know, they're moving from the idea of selling scanners to actual patient outcomes, an incredible journey uh, in, in, in healthcare, personal health, uh, you know, around medical devices. Uh, and then financial services, of course, which, uh, you know, a lot, we'll talk about, quite a bit about today. Uh, you know, banks are in, uh, have been providing, you know, services for, for, for many, many years that have not really changed that much. But now, if you look at retail banking, you know, you've got, you've got a transition away from just providing really a, 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 a basic account to, to wonderful different types of services that, uh, that they are going to popularize over the coming years. So lots of lots of changes. We're in many more industries than the most obvious, you know, Netflix and and Spotify type businesses, which have been obviously the 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 the, the most apparent subscription services that you've seen. Uh, so yes, all types of businesses uh, where you know to, and, and Zora ultimately uh, allowing customers and businesses to acquire customers, build them, collect payment and, and finally take that as revenue to the CFO. That, that is really, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, what, Z what Zora does. Thank you very much, brilliant. So you, you touched on the, the, the subscription model, which nicely links into the next question, which is what are the specific benefits of subscription model for businesses as well as consumers? Yeah, and, and it's important to, to make that divide, right? Because, you know, for businesses, for businesses who take on this, this transformation, you know, first of all, you know, these transformations are not easy. So, so the, there is investment, but the, but the advantages are, are, are becoming very clear now. And, and, you know, the first thing I, thing I would say is shareholders love subscription businesses, right? The companies love this and the shareholders love it for one fundamental reason. They create highly sustainable predictable revenue sources, predictable recurring revenue sources. So imagine, imagine that you know going into the beginning of your fiscal year, pretty much what your performance is going to be plus or minus a few percentage points. You know, compare that to the old days of, of starting year from zero and wondering what your team are going to, to sell. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredibly predictable stream. It can even be resilient to major events. We've just gone through, you know, a pandemic, and if you look at the way the subscription businesses, the, you know, the businesses that were pr predominantly subscription based, how resilient they were to, 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 that, uh, to that period, uh, is, you know, absolutely incredible. So very predictable. Um, the other thing, they just grow a lot faster. They, you know, we've got, uh, our, we publish our own subscription economy index, and that shows that these companies are growing, these subscription companies are growing 4.6 times faster than the S&P 500. So big, strong growth. Um, and it's 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 really because once you build these businesses, in many cases, you've got now multiple levers to grow, right? In the in, in you've got 
it, compare that to the transactional business. It's it's basically you you acquire a transaction, a customer through a transaction. But in this model, you've you've got also got yes, you've got customer acquisition, but you've got the renewal strategy, and you can and you can tune that renewal process. And it's really important to stop your customers churning and going away. So you can put a lot of effort into that. And finally, if you've got this relationship with your customer, then you can actually start to upsell and cross-sell very different things to them. So you're building a relationship, not trying to just commit a, a, a single transaction. Um, you get so much more data and insight into your customers. You start to know who they are uh, in a way that you don't in the more transactional models. Uh, and based upon that, you can change your offering. And again, this is what we saw during the pandemic, right? We saw companies like Zoom change their offering in, in, a, in, a, in a blink of an eye because of what was happening around them. They know what their customers, they could see what their customers were needing. Another great example, Fender, Fender Guitars, they, they, they have an amazing uh, application that allows, teaches you how to play guitar. Well, all of a sudden people had time on their hands and they realized that and they tuned their services uh, almost immediately to, to, to address those opportunities. So in summary for a business, the, the change to this service model and this subscription model is a, is a, gives people so much more, uh, gives the companies a, a whole range of benefits that uh, the, trend, the traditional models don't. Now, for the consumer, what does that really mean? Well, it means that customers like ourselves and our businesses who are consuming these services are getting in, constantly improving and relevant services versus a product that in many cases, you know, from the moment you, you acquire the product, it starts its journey to obsolete, right? So, so you know, moving away from that and, and constantly having services that are adapting to your needs is, 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 a, is a major benefit for, for, for the consumer. Uh, there's more freedom, right, to access the service exactly where and how you, you want that service. Uh, and, and finally, you know, that old adage about Model T Ford, yes, you can have any color as long as it's black, right? Well, that's not the case here. This is about personalization. This is more and more about changing the, 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 the offering at an individual level. And all of these things are the benefits that, uh, that I think the consumers are now seeing through the subscription economy. Thank you, John. That's brilliant. Um, so I think we can drill down more into the, the previous questions. And uh, my next question is, what are the solutions that Zora offers to its clients? And I think in addition to that, we can also cover uh, what are the segments that uh, that you're covering? Um, and you also spoke about the benefits, uh, both for the uh, consumers as well as for the businesses. Um, and lastly, what, what, so what the question is, what is your unique selling proposition? Yeah. So look, Zora is a software as a service platform, right? It's an integrated suite of products that uh, enable businesses uh, to manage this complete order to revenue process uh, in this actually very different world of, of uh, recurring relationships and services. So, you know, up until now, the systems that we've needed are really about handling selling things, right? Um, and the, the, the order to revenue process for selling a thing is actually very, very, very simple. It's very linear and it's very finite. Once the once once you've sold the product, you book it, you take the revenue, you close the books. But in this world, the books never close, right? It's a constant relationship that you're trying to evolve with your customer. So it's a much more complex uh, order to revenue process. And Zora, from from its in, instantiation, was was all about handling that specific world. So we have four main product areas. Uh, we have the, the Zora billing area, which is all about monetizing these services. Uh, but of course, it's not just, you know, $9.99 a month. There is, there is one-time charges involved in many of these offerings. There are, yes, these fixed recurring payments. But there's also increasingly, and very importantly, the idea of consumption-based or usage-based uh, charging. And that, that's really come through with the advent of technologies like Internet of Things, where you can start to see how people are actually using the, the devices, the services that, uh, that you have. So Zora Billing is, is really everything that is around monetizing and, and, and charging and invoicing your, your, your customers. Then we have this area called Zora Revenue. And again, you know, don't be afraid of this topic. It's an area that, you know, yes, is, is, is shrouded in the mist of accountancy, but maybe not all people understand that um, revenue recognition is a very complex area, particularly for these types of offerings, because just because somebody has paid for something doesn't mean the company can recognize the revenue on that. You know, there, there are complexities brought in by uh, international accounting standards about how companies are allowed to report the earnings that they that they're making. So what Zora, very simply, what Zora does 
is simplify that and absolute automate the process as orders come through of giving an app up to date real time information about the, the revenue position for that company. And this, of course, fuels the ability for companies to make real time decision making and address challenges as they're as, as they're coming through. So that's Zora in revenue. When we have Zora collect and collect, as it suggests, is all about collecting uh, money from the, the customer. And that could be everything from credit card uh, payments through to rank reconciliation in, in, in bank accounts. Um, big areas in this area. I mean, failed payments is, is a big area concern for, for any business where you're, you're taking credit card payment. Increasingly, that's become a, a, a battleground for, uh, for companies. So Zora Collect does very intelligent things using machine learning to help recover. We've seen upwards of 20, 30% uh, of payments recovered, which would have been uh, lost uh, without, the, without that capability. And then finally, and really underneath all of this is this thing we call the Zora Central Platform. And this is really what allows companies to, to take the, our technology and actually develop and extend it in their own way to, to meet the, 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 the specific needs and complexities of, of their business. So four main product areas, lots more to come, but I would say that's the, 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 the foundation of our, of our business. In terms of segments, you know, we, we are in both B2C uh, areas that you could imagine, like I said, like if you if you subscribe to the Telegraph or to this, you know, or we have customers in the sports area like the zone. Um, so you have large consumer, millions and millions of consumers. We'll see more of that in automotive, but then also on the B2B side. So in the business to business side, we have everything from big software companies, big manufacturing companies that are building everything from, you know, a kind of uh, earth moving equipment through to health scanners. So we really have both worlds very much covered. In terms of industry, there isn't an industry that we don't cover right now. Um, and you know, I think the industries, like I said, that have pioneered the area. Yes, you are aware of software, SaaS. This is these are areas which, of course, are very obvious. Um, and areas such as media, we are used to subscribing to to information and entertainment. But really, it, watching now permeate the rest of the industry, you know, the rest of the industry is 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 really quite quite remarkable. Thank you very much, John. So you touched on the, the industries that you cover wide range of industries uh, with the services and, and products you have. Um, my next question is links to that, which is uh, why financial services industry yeah. uh, and what does 2022 hold for Zora and, and what is and what does 2022 hold for financial in, uh, services industry? Yeah, it's an interesting. I mean, you know, I I joined here about seven years ago. And, you know, of course, you know, when if you had said to me seven years ago that the financial services industry would have been a target for us, you know, I would have been a little bit surprised. Uh, but over the last two, three, four years, we've seen a real interest coming from many different areas of the financial services industry. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch on uh, four main areas that I think are quite different uh, and quite interesting. And, uh, and I think these are areas that we will see develop uh, substantially over, uh, over the next few years. Let's start with, you know, the one we are all most familiar with, which is consumer banking. Um, you know, consumer banking is different today than it was for our parents, right? I mean, people did not change their bank account, right? You, you, you joined when you were 16, 17 years old, got your first bank account, and you probably stayed with them, you know, for the rest of your life. You know now today that that is not the case, right? There are so many challenger banks available. Uh, there is, on many of the financial products, there's almost a race to the bottom, right? It's, it's very price sensitive. So the banks, the banks, the retail banks are now changing their approach and looking at ways to create new and compelling loyalty-based services that fit the lifestyles that, that, that we have today. Um, so, you know, uh, we, we, we can talk about a few examples. I'll just say right now, retail banking is about to be radically changed through a whole host of, of different services uh, and which are gonna be monetized, uh, you know, through this kind of subscription model. Um, then we touch on, we can touch on small to medium uh, business banking. We've seen quite a few companies come to us and really, it's, a, it's, a, it's quite interesting that they've been providing services to their customers for, for many, many years that they've never really monetized. These services tended to be given away for free to support things like international trading accounts, import and export support, and currency support in, in those circumstances. But what they realized was a lot of what they did to help their customers has uh, has 
true you know intrinsic value to it and so looking at ways of creating kind of membership to those types of services and then monetizing that as a subscription in some form some usage-based elements to that uh has become very apparent so we think that uh we'll see a lot around uh you know small to medium business banking in that in that way um and then on the corporate and investment banking um you know we, we we have a lot of companies that are looking to monetize these large repositories of information that they've gathered over many many years in terms of you know uh, data that was probably driving their own uh processes and their own transactional businesses but that information has become so valuable that they're now looking at how to use apis to access that information access those repositories and provide that as uh, a service, a unique service to uh, not just their own uh, internal use, but now external customers. Um, and we're seeing that in all sorts of different areas within uh, corporate and investment banking. And then finally, uh, an area that um, uh, is really radical and, 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 and something in some respects that we are familiar with, which is around leasing, uh, leasing and financing. Now, most of us have probably experienced a car lease, right? And we know that it's not a particularly uh, customer-friendly process, right? It's a pure financial transaction, whether it's PCP or whatever other service you use. But actually, you know, you've got large equipment financing. Uh, and, and if you go into that world, you realize that um, with the advent of IoT, with this idea of the Internet of Things and that these big devices are now, you know, have, have sensors on them, that information is being provided back over the Internet, you now have the opportunity to, to transition to something that is usage-based, consumption-based charging for those particular devices. So we see a lot of companies in this area, some big banks that we're working with that are really trying to transform the future of leasing and financing into much more of a usage and outcome-driven uh, results. You can imagine obvious areas such as uh, earth moving equipment, you know, agricultural equipment, uh, medical equipment, these things are moving into, well, you know, these devices have huge costs associated with them. So the banks are really, really important in this because somebody has to finance it at the end of the day and then look to provide that in a different business model where, you know, additional services are layered over. So what the customer is buying is really the outcome and a, and a much better service versus having to simply see the, 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 the paperwork of a lease associated with a, with a tractor or combine harvester. So very interesting areas. Uh, we're seeing it in a lot of different areas, such as you know, industrial printing. Uh, so it's, it's going to, and of course, personal, personal vehicles and, and, and commercial vehicle uh, financing will also very much move into, into that area. Now, we've interestingly, we just published a, a groundbreaking white paper in collaboration with INSEAD on the, how the subscription economy is actually getting into the financial uh, services industry. So really would recommend uh, the viewers to, to go onto our website, download that and you'll get uh, plenty of information uh, in, in relation to the areas that I've, uh, I've discussed. Thank you, John. And of course, we'll link that uh, white paper in our publications as well. So we can uh, see that in the description or in the wherever you're watching this video now. Um, and lastly, uh, what is your growth strategy and marketing plans for the next uh, one to two years? Yeah, I mean, George had an amazing you know, kind of growth over the, the, the last, what are we now, I mean, 15 years old, but the last year or two, I know we've, you know, everybody's had a difficult operating environment, but of course what it has done is it's driven the adoption of, of the, you know, the digital transformation of companies, technology. Um, and, and really over the last year, we've had massive growth, both in terms of our business and the innovation that we've, uh, we've brought to market with new products, you know, coming, coming on stream. Um, you know, I've mentioned revenue and collect. These are we, we're now truly a multi-product uh, provider. You know, sitting here, 2022, and in fact, we've just had a recent uh, investment from Silver Lake of 400 million, uh, and that's there to really power us up uh, and accelerate our growth uh, into into other areas. So you will see many other services and products coming from Zor over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, and also, you know, some really new and exciting strategic partnerships. You know, we've we've uh, we've recently uh, investigated some big areas. You know, with Microsoft, it's not been something that we've been particularly close to over the over the history. But in the last 12, 18 months, 
Uh, we have really delved into the world of the Microsoft partner and ecosystem. Um, and I think it's a watch this space on, on that one. So uh, yeah, big partnerships, lots of products coming out um, and, and really expanding into this area that we call the subscription economy. John, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.